application with this foundation, I have found that I've really been liking a more moisturizing foundation. Um, I have yet to try it with just a pore filler or with just something that gives you a more matte finish. My reasoning behind that and just my tip for you is that if the foundation itself is already promoting itself to be matte, I wouldn't add on to the matteness. Matteness, not madness. Play on words there. I think it's actually a little bit more of like a balancing act and it's a little bit more beneficial to add a more moisturizing primer. Definitely not something that's too moisturizing because you also don't want to mix consistencies to where they're not going to like really jive together. So what I've been using lately as a primer for this foundation is actually the Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer. I know it's pricey. Um, you don't have to use this one. I find that a very similar drugstore version of this primer as far as consistency and what it does for you is going to be the... I think it was from L'Oreal. I was using it a lot in my past tutorials, like before the holidays. And I had mentioned to you guys that it really doesn't do much as far as like filling in pores or keeping you matte. It's really just good with letting your foundation stick onto you. It was the new L'Oreal primer that they came out with. I definitely will list it down below on the exact name of what it was called because I can't think of it right now. But it actually kind of looked like this, like the same idea, same consistency as far as the product itself, not packaging, obviously. <laughs> but it was a very loose primer. It was actually even white also. Um, and it was not very matte or drying. It was actually more of a hydrating primer from, or maybe it was Maybelline. <gasps> It was Maybelline. I'm so wrong. I don't know why I kept saying L'Oreal. It was the Maybelline um, primer, but again, I will list it down below the exact name of it so you guys can go check it out. So I just take one pump of the primer because that's all you need. So I'm not going to go in and color correct anything like how I sometimes do just because I want you guys to see the actual coverage of this foundation. By the way, the only thing that I have on right now is my eye makeup brows and I just have some concealer underneath my eyes slightly. Um, just because I didn't want to have to bother putting that on afterwards. So as far as application, I have tried this foundation two ways. I have tried with a foundation brush, and I have also tried with a beauty blender. My tip for you is that the best application I got from it was with the beauty blender for sure. This is the white one, by the way. Mine is super dirty, <laughs> so definitely don't mind that. Don't judge me either. So I'm going to apply one layer with the Beauty Blender. I'll see you guys what it looks like with one layer, and then I'll see I'll show you guys what it looks like with two layers. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. Storms we is well enough to where I'm totally fine with just one layer. So this is one layer of coverage. I'm gonna bring you guys in just a little bit closer. Here is the one layer of coverage up close. Also, um, my burn is still like a little red, so you can kind of see how well it covered it on its own, which was pretty good. And of course, any other discoloration or blemishes, I feel like it covered it really, really well. So now that you guys got to see the application of it, I'm going to finish off the rest of my makeup and we are back. All right, so now all the rest of my makeup is on. So I feel like I'm too high. There you go. So let's move on to all of the little bits and details of this foundation and what I have found with it. So first of all, I do want to say that with this foundation, immediately when I saw it, I thought that... They were obviously trying to compete with the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. This whole Demi Matte Foundation trend is really big right now. And it's a little surprising since we are in the middle of winter. And usually during winter, it's more about the hydration and moisturizing and stuff like that. But I'm really liking this because I think, you know, for us that like matte foundations or for us oily skin girls that need matte foundations and can't really work too much with the hydrating foundations or sheer coverage and stuff like that. Um, I think we kind of get a little bit forgotten about during this time of the year and all of our foundations that new foundations that we want to seek after don't come out until around the spring or summer. So I think it was really great to, for Maybelline to release this during this time. By the way, it should be out already in stores. Um, I know I found mine the week before um, January's first week, so 
I think definitely by now they should be in your stores. I found mine at CVS. Let me tell you what this foundation retailed at at CVS. Just because I can't remember how much right now off the top of my head. Okay, so on the CVS website, it does show that this foundation is retailing for $9.99, which is not bad. I do want to say that the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation is actually a little bit pricier. Let me double check that. Alright, so here are the price comparisons. The Maybelline Dream Velvet is retailing for $9.99 off of the CVS website, while the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte is retailing for $12.99. So there is a bit of a price difference. As far as the packaging and weight of this, you get one fluid ounce and you still get one fluid ounce. So you're actually getting the same amount of product in each package. I do think that the textures and consistency and finish of these foundations are actually really different and so just in case you have tried the L'Oreal and Fallow Pro Matte or you have it and you're curious but now you're wondering if maybe you should just skip over this and try out this one instead let me tell you how they're similar and how they're different they're both similar in the sense that they are not completely completely matte they are a demi matte finish so not only do you not have to worry about oil control or oil you know having really oily looking skin this will help control it. It has a nice soft finish. For those of you that are dry, I don't know how well it would work out for you in the sense that if it would be too drying and not moisturizing enough. But I know for someone that is very oily, this is actually just that right in between formula and finish to where you don't feel like you look super matte and super dry, but you don't feel like you look super oily. It's almost like a very natural skin finish, if that makes sense. Now also how they're similar is that the consistency of the foundation, they're quite similar as far as they aren't liquid foundations, they're not as loose in consistency. Um, they actually do both have a very mousse-like texture, but I will say that the L'Oreal one is a little bit more loose and this one is a little bit more stiff. I actually feel like this formula has a little bit more of a thickness to it. It actually reminds me a lot of the consistency of the Revlon Color Stay Whipped Foundation to where it's it's not going to run at all. Like if you leave it on the back of your hand, like it won't run whatsoever. I'm going to give you a close-up shot of what it looks like. So here's what it looks like on the back of my hand. As you can tell, I'm like kind of moving my hand around and it's not moving. That's how thick the foundation consistency is. And it's very airy. You can tell there's a lot of air in this foundation. It has a lot of bounce to it. See, it kind of even looks like whipped cream or something to where the peak stands up. It's not falling down. So definitely a very um, thicker consistency. As far as color range, I wish I had more to tell you guys, but I didn't get to actually see this on display. Um, they're actually barely about to start putting them out, so they're actually mixed in with like bins of new stuff that needed to come out, um, like onto the floor already. So I didn't get to see like the whole shade range. I'm pretty sure they're up now, like in stores. I know that a lot of people had problems with finding a good color with the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, which is like the only downfall to this foundation, which is kind of a typical downfall with most drugstore foundations anyway. Color is just like the hardest thing, also finding out what your color is. One thing that I would say I wish Maybelline would have kind of fixed or took into consideration is the fact that you cannot see the foundation within the bottle, which is really sucky <laughs> because at least with the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, this is the actual foundation and you can see what the foundation color looks like more or less without having to open the package. They were very smart in that sense in making their packaging see-through. But with this one, you really are just taking a guess and it's a little bit of a hit or miss. Um, I luckily chose a foundation color that I feel like is very suitable for my skin tone right now. I know probably when I start to self tan or into the summer months, this is definitely going to be way too light for me or way too light for my liking at least because you guys know I like my foundations a little bit darker. Um, but with Maybelline, I feel like Maybelline always tries to put out a good color range anyway. I know when I was looking for the Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundations, um, they had a pretty good color range, I mean, as far as my opinion. And like that packaging was ideal since it was a glass bottle, you can kind of see the foundation more or less. I don't know if this is already going to be up on the Temptalia website to where you can kind of color match your foundation. But I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of other beauty bloggers and people reviewing this product as well that maybe bought a couple or a few of these that have actually swatched them. So definitely if I were you, what I like to do when I can't swatch a foundation myself is actually I like to Google swatches. Um, and usually you'll find people actually have like their skin swatches and you can kind of more or less see what the color will be like against your skin tone.
So another key difference between the L'Oreal Velvet Pro Matte and this one is that the L'Oreal Velvet Pro Matte does market itself as a foundation you can wear for 24 hours. It's a long wearing foundation. So just be informed that this foundation does not claim that whatsoever. It does not claim to be long wearing at all. I have worn this for a full day. I myself, with the primer that I've used with it, have not found it to break on me. I haven't found it to start to separate or anything like that or get extremely oily. I'm very pleased with this foundation, aware of it. I feel like these two actually do wear the same way. I don't find that the L'Oreal Pebble Pro Matte breaks on me. I don't feel like it gets super oily. I will say though, and it's gonna be a little shocking, that I feel like this foundation actually stays matte longer than this one which is funny because this one does market itself as 24 hours and this one doesn't i find that i'm not having to blot my nose or anything like that for a really long period of time but i am going to give the benefit of the doubt with this foundation and kind of say that the weather here has been very dry lately it's been very cold it hasn't been hot at all okay it hasn't been very cold but it's been cold for valley weather <laughs> for south texas weather it's been you know nice um, so the weather could actually have a lot to deal with the wear of this foundation. I am definitely, when things start to heat up, which will, you know, I mean, I don't know how long it'll take, especially since I'm going to be traveling and stuff. Um, I am going to see how well this works in different climates, hopefully. Um, but for right now, since we are in the middle of winter, I will say that if you're oily, this foundation is like superb because it's going to keep you looking matte and fresh really, really long. So that is something that I am definitely really liking about this foundation. As far as coverage, you guys got to see in the clip of me applying it, I feel like it is definitely a medium to full coverage foundation. It's not super full coverage. I think if you're someone that likes extreme full coverage, going in with two layers is going to be ideal for you. If you're someone that is okay with a medium coverage, I know I'm okay with medium to full. Um, definitely medium was okay. One layer was... Ooh. One layer was definitely enough for me. I mentioned in the application part as well that I have found that using a beauty blender was probably the best way to apply this foundation. I have used a foundation brush, a kabuki brush, and now my beauty blender. I felt like with a brush, since the consistency was a lot more thick, it was harder for me to actually get a nice even application and having the application look very flawless and airbrush with just a brush. I don't know what it was. Again, I want to say it has to deal with the consistency of it. So with the beauty blender and with adding just that little bit of extra moisture with the dampness of the beauty blender, it actually helps spread out the foundation fabulously. I will say that if you're dry skin and you really want to try this foundation, I think a really great way for you to try this, and I want to say it probably turn out really, really nice, is to mix in a little bit of like a beauty oil with the foundation. I think that would give you the um, consistency that you're looking for and also the hydration. So I think definitely that'd be something to try out. Also on the back of this foundation, it does say that it is a it's their, it's Maybelline's first gel whipped foundation. So the fact that it's a gel base, I'm actually really um, fond of because if you guys remember back when I was still with Bobbi Brown, my favorite Bobbi Brown foundation was the long wear even finish foundation from Bobbi Brown. And that one was actually a gel based foundation. It's infused with like the color and stuff like that. I absolutely love foundations that are gel based because usually they are, again, more suitable for oily skin. Anytime you see something that says gel, it's probably geared towards oily skin people. If you see something that says cream, then it's definitely something that's more geared towards dry skin people. Gel and cream have different consistencies and they work differently with the two skin types. So I have been wearing this foundation for the past couple of days already um, and I definitely have been wearing it off and on since I got it just to kind of test out um, how it works with different primers, different things I like to layer on top of my makeup as far as like my contour and stuff like that. I did cream contour over this and I did add just a little bit of concealer around my nostril area because that's where I tend to get the most red. Um, and it actually worked out really, really well. It doesn't disturb the foundation underneath, which I found that anything that markets itself as matte, sometimes you have to be careful with because if it's too drying, it will just be a mess when you're trying to apply a cream over it. So definitely this is, since it has that hydrating factor, I think it works really well with other cream products. I also haven't experienced any breakouts or skin irritation or anything like that. It's definitely not a scented foundation. I think if you have sensitive skin, um, this would be a great option for you to try if you have tried drugstore products before and they haven't given you a problem. I know for some people, if their skin is ultra sensitive, drugstore products sometimes have those ingredients that 
don't really mix well with sensitive skin, but I haven't experienced anything, but I'm not someone that has super sensitive skin anyway, um, but I can't imagine that this would actually upset anybody's skin. If anything, since the coverage is more full, if your skin is that type of skin type that needs to breathe a little bit, then this could be a problem for you, but if not, then I think this would actually work really well with different skin types also. Just touching really quick again on the color of this foundation, I did get shade 05 in Warm Porcelain. Um, I think that they have a good range of different colors, but I have noticed that with Maybelline, they try to incorporate a little bit of both of like pink and yellow and warm undertones and stuff like that. I think for the one that I got, even though it says Warm Porcelain, it does have a little bit more of a pinkness to it. Um, I personally like warmer foundations, but I know that my undertones are more of like a neutral. I could actually go with either or cool or warm. I just personally prefer warm tones, but it did work out for me again because I'm probably in that neutral zone. But if you're someone that are that definitely needs warm undertones, I don't know how well these foundations will work out for you. Um, just because, like I said, mine market itself as warm, but it actually has a little bit more of a coolness to it than what I was expecting. So it's something to be careful of. I definitely like this foundation a whole lot. I, I'm actually starting to like it a little bit more than L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte. I don't know if I'm speaking too soon, but just because of the finish and the longevity of it and how fresh it's keeping my face, I'm really liking it. But we will see. Definitely, I'll keep you guys updated, especially on Snapchat and stuff. I will definitely kind of give you guys a little bit of an update probably later on. I know I tend to like to do that kind of stuff. Um, but if I were to rank this out of a... I'm throwing makeup everywhere. If I were to rank this out of like a one star being like total crap <laughs> and five stars being it's a definitely worth trying, I would definitely give this four stars. I can't say that I'm like super blown away with it just because it's nothing new to me. Um, but I think that the product has really worked out and it's definitely proven itself to be true to what it reads on the label. Um, and it's also just a little bit lower in price point. I say what's the harm in it, especially if you have the CVS coupons, you can get a really good discount on this. So I would definitely say it's a four. It's definitely worth trying. If you guys have any questions on this foundation or if you guys have tried it yourself, you're experiencing any type of problems with it, let me know down below in the comment section and also let us know what your thoughts and opinions were because I think it's helpful to read other people's review of it, maybe some tips or tricks that you found to work with this foundation. But other than that, that wraps up my review for this foundation. I'm excited to share with you guys another review of a foundation I've been trying out because I think that one was a little bit more interesting. I know a lot of people have been speculating about it. So definitely that will probably be up next week. I definitely do want to film my cream contouring video. That will probably be up on Friday. So hopefully on Friday we get the cream contouring out of the way and kind of help you guys with that whole contouring process because I know it can be a little tricky or confusing for some people. But other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!